I had a conversation with my parents I didn't think I would have. It's weird to hear praise from my parents. <laughs> I can stop the sentence right there. No, it's weird to hear praise from my parents about the decade-old, widely acclaimed video game, The Last of Us. I never thought I would hear them talk in detail about the plot, the world, the characters, and the theme of any video game. And they really wanted to talk about the ending and how it left them thinking about what they would do. Except the scenario wasn't entirely that bizarre because we weren't discussing a video game. We were of course talking about HBO's, sorry, Max's newest hit series, The Last of Us. Right, that came out this year by the way. Unbeknownst to them, the same praise also applied to the video game. They assumed the game must have only been about shooting zombies, but I tried to elucidate that the whole narrative originated from the game as well. They had a hard time envisioning this since their only concept of a video game was either Mario or an FPS. Not sure where they got that idea. So I showed them the trailer for the game and they instantly realized, oh my god, this came from a video game. I felt a little proud to finally show them how sophisticated games can be. That not every game I play is a mindless waste of time. Just most of the games I play are a mindless waste of time. Anyways, it was cool to see how they loved the game despite having never played it. But then I realized, oh wait, I've never played The Last of Us. They never bought me a PlayStation, I bought one, and then I lost it, and then got another. I elaborate in another video, but yeah, 10 years ago, I watched a playthrough of the game from my iPod. And I fell in love regardless, astonished by the visuals and the level of dramatic storytelling exhibited from a video game. And really, that's what makes The Last of Us one of the greatest games of all time. People don't really talk about it because of how fun it is to throw bricks. They revered the game for the same reasons I fell in love, and I got that without playing the game. I know the game is much more than just good graphics and good story, but I know enough to contribute to discussions comparing the game and its adaptation. I would still love to play The Last of Us, but even though I own a PlayStation now, many factors still prevent me from playing the game today. I mean, look at all the games coming out this year, and I've only played two of them. And I'm still playing Power Watch Simulator. Aside from The Last of Us, I also fell in love with so many other games just by watching them. I would not have played these games if I had not watched them, and I still would love them even without playing them. I think it's totally acceptable to love video games without playing them, and I want to explain just why that is. There are plenty of games that I like that I still have not even touched, like Resident Evil. Never played any of the games, yet I've been watching full playthroughs of the series ever since RE7 came out. The games are fun to watch, and I enjoy seeing how people react to the big scares in each game. And even though I've never played RE2, I feel like I know the layout of the RPD station. Like, I know exactly where this locker is and what's inside it. Other games I love and didn't play include Cuphead. Love the visuals and the soundtrack. Soma. The story still haunts me at a deep existential level. Ghost Trick. One of the best and most clever endings to a game I have ever seen, and I'm excited to play the remaster. Cyberpunk 2077. Loved Edge Runners. The game's all fixed by now, right? League of Legends. Arcane was also phenomenal. Never touching League. I'm already unattractive enough. I don't know. This might count. Final Fantasy 7. Played a remake, which is basically a completely different game. And you know what? I'll confess. I am that guy. I was a Persona fan that was excited to play Persona for the first time. I saw how the Phantom Thieves took over the Game Awards and how Joker rolled up into Smash. I was blown away by the style of Persona 5, even the UI was flashy. And the music? You mean to tell me that this song is the battle theme? I saw it was just some promotional song like Imagine Dragons making a song for Starfield. So of course I got hooked on Persona 5, and with rumors of a Switch port coming soon, I waited. For three years. Meanwhile, the anime adaptation was wrapping up, so I decided to watch that. As it turns out, I actually could have played the game. I didn't realize Atlas released a PS3 game in 2017. So while I didn't have a PlayStation, my roommate still had his PS3. 
I found a copy and was so excited to play Persona for the first time. However, it felt redundant playing it, especially after finishing the anime. At least my roommate got to play it completely, so he had a good time with the game. Man, even with the game I bought, I'm still watching others play, like, what kind of cuckoldry is- But hey, I got the game on Switch eventually. It's somewhere in here. Oh, there it is. Still haven't beaten it. Of course, there are games that I've watched that I eventually got to play. The big ones include Halo, Minecraft, and GTA V. I found them all through YouTube and watched so many videos about each game that playing them for the first time felt like second nature. Like I already knew how to get to the airport in GTA V just because so many people would go there in videos. I have a habit of watching games more so than playing them because I physically cannot play more than I can watch. Growing up, I didn't have the consoles to play the most popular games other than that from Nintendo. And even if I do have the other consoles now, playing every game I want is still an insurmountable task. Gaming is expensive. I have to pay hundreds and even thousands of dollars just to buy a machine that can play games which are already expensive on their own. And even with one expensive machine, I can't play every game because they're exclusive to another expensive machine. Even with all the money in the world, I still can't afford to play because of one other thing. Time. Sometimes I can't play because I gotta study or work. Sometimes I can't play because I'm with family and friends. And sometimes I can't play because I want to play another game. Watching games is so much easier. It's quick, convenient, discreet, and free. Back then, it took a while for a console and a game to boot up. It's extremely fast now, yes, but still, it's much faster to find a video on my phone or computer. I have my phone on me at all times, not my Switch. Also, the TV wasn't always available for me as a kid. Even if I could have played The Last of Us when it came out, I don't think my parents would have felt fine with me playing a gory, violent video game in the living room on a weekday. But I could get away with watching a video game in my room on my iPod. And of course, watching video games of other people playing games online is completely free. Which is crazy how that still remains the fact as the internet becomes more commercialized. It's unique to see how exclusive and yet how public games are, especially compared to other media. Games are sometimes inaccessible because of the investment required and the fact that they're interactive. Some people aren't physically able to play games. Let's say my dad got hooked on the story for Final Fantasy 16 for some reason. He can't play because he lacks the ability to and he might also be missing an arm. However, he can tune in on free public broadcasts of people playing Final Fantasy 16 and other games in their entirety. It's not like you have to pay for YouTube monthly to access all videos nor do pay-per-view streams on Twitch. The service is free and the content is mostly free. I could experience the entirety of the story of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 for free and not play the game, and I very much appreciate that. Actually, I get Spider-Man 2 if this is in the game. Shocker! I appreciate that sharing a video game online is very open despite how exclusive playing video games are. However, sharing movies, shows, sports events, or even music online is not as open. Streamers and YouTubers can't show those things in their entirety like they can with video games. I guess there are those YouTube videos that summarizes a whole film, but watching those feels dirtier than pirating for me. Although, experiencing those types of media firsthand is highly accessible. I can watch shows on my phone, sports on my computer, movies on an airplane. I can watch Tenet on live TV in Korea at a random restaurant and the dialogue would be just as audible. I don't need a specific machine to watch specific shows and movies, right? I don't need an Apple TV to watch Apple TV+. Plus. I can watch it on any TV, device, game console, phone, web browser, whatever. Just the content is exclusive, not the service itself. And it's fairly cheap, at least relatively compared to video games. I can watch a film in theaters for like $15, buy a movie for $20, Subscribe to Netflix for only $10 a month, Hulu for only $8 a month, 
Max for sixteen dollars a month. Spotify Premium for eleven Disney Plus a month. for eleven dollars a month. Apple TV Plus, Paramount for Plus for six dollars a month. Crunchyroll Premium for eight dollars a month. Sarah's Fauna Fanatic Prime Membership Video for five dollars a month. Six million, million watts in the ESPN Plus for ten dollars a month. Thirteen dollars a month. Thirteen dollars a month. Thirteen dollars a month. Thirteen dollars a month. You wouldn't download a car, right? The point is, all other media is highly accessible to watch in comparison to playing games. There is a push to make gaming as accessible through streaming, but the efforts are still nascent. Regardless, watching games is forever more convenient and accessible than playing them. Another reason why I watch more is because I like the people playing the games. They're entertaining on their own, regardless of what games they play. Sometimes a game is too scary to play, so watching others play makes the scares more bearable. Sometimes you just want to learn how to be better at a game or just be amazed by the display of skill. And sometimes you just want to hang out. The parasocial interaction is part of the fun. And often it generates interest in a game much like how it did with Minecraft. I got exposed to so many games because of people playing them online, and I'm still playing games because of that influence. However, it could also ruin interest, which leads to the downsides of watching games. It could spoil the experience of a game and leave you unmotivated to play it yourself. Knowing the full story might prevent some people from playing a game. This also extends to some adaptations like Persona 5 The Animation and how it left me unmotivated to finish the game. Sometimes it gives the wrong impression like Dark Souls. I strayed from that game for so long because of its reputation and didn't understand the appeal until I played it myself. Also, some adaptations completely misrepresent the original game, like most adaptations actually. And even if you enjoy the experience of purely watching a game, you're not really supporting the game itself. No money is being given to the developers. Watching games won't give you the full experience the developers are offering. Maybe it's not fair for me to say that I love these games. Maybe I don't love The Last of Us. Maybe I just love its story and a TV series. I don't love Resident Evil. I just love watching people play the series. I just love Cuphead's soundtrack and aesthetic. I just love Cyberpunk's and League's adaptations. I just love Midgar and some of the characters of Final Fantasy VII. I just love Persona 5's, well, everything. I haven't beaten the game, but I'm still charmed by its characters, its style of combat, visuals, and music. I still bought the game even after experiencing all of it without playing it. And there's still plenty of things in Persona 5 Royal that's completely new and I'd be able to tell what's different. I'm still willing to play all of these games, I just couldn't initially because I didn't have a way or I was already satisfied with the passive experience. I don't think watching games is going to completely ward people off from playing them. And that's because video games are games, they're interactive and fun on their own. The developers and game companies know this, that's why gaming is allowed to be widely shared online. Knowing the story of God of War isn't going to prevent the combat from being fun or the world from being interesting to explore. Even after getting the wrong impression of Dark Souls, I still played the game and loved it. I realized people don't play just to rage, they play because after all the suffering they received the greatest elation from finally being the boss and the game. As for Outer Wilds, I didn't find the game because I confused it with the Outer Worlds. I actually got interested from watching Amelia Watson play. And even though I was spoiled some elements of the game, it didn't tarnish my own exploration and prevent it from becoming one of my favorite games of all time. Watching a game can never truly replace the experience of playing a game, and that is not what I'm trying to argue. I'm just saying that it's fine to appreciate games despite not playing them especially when not everyone can play every game. And it's better to love than to hate a game without playing. Now that seems irrational, however there are some valid arguments. Let's say I might not be a fan of Scorn's art direction. I don't think playing the game is going to make me like it more. Perhaps I appreciate the effort put into it, but yeah, no. Hate is too strong of a word. It's fine to be uninterested or even afraid. If I like a game enough, if I love a game, I will play it. If I don't have a way, then I will find it, much like how I did with Halo, Minecraft, and Persona 5. And with all this adoration, I think I owe it to Persona to finally finish it and move on. By then, all the games for 2023 would be a couple years old and discounted.
I'd still love to play The Last of Us even after intimately knowing how the story goes. Because nothing will replace the wonder of exploring the environments, the feel of the mechanics and the gameplay systems, the vibe of just hanging out with characters, and it's still $70? Forget that, I'm go back to power washing. Now this, this is a fun game to watch.